Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Don Arman, your host, Chad of Fury 333, and we are on to the finals of the May 27th, 2017 tournament. And this is going to be Guyop and Filthos fighting for first place. Google Frog just got third place against Filthos, so whoever wins this takes home the gold. Although I understand there are actually no medals for this tournament, but that might be negotiated later on. At any rate, we are on to Desert Plateaus, which is another map we haven't seen a whole lot recently. Not a bad map, just not one we've seen a whole lot recently. And once we get start, actually no, we're still waiting on people. That's supposed to be pregame music. I thought there was pregame music. Apparently there is not. Anyway, there we go. So, guy up going for the Spiderbot Factory, which makes some sense in this map. This is a fairly hilly map. While Vilthas going for the Cloakybot Factory, which is a bit more expected, and on a map like this is a little bit safer. Although, now that they're going for corner starts, this is actually unusual. Normally, Desert Plateaus, you have people start at, like, here and here, or here and here. But, no, we're getting total corner starts here. So, guy up with the Spiderbot Factory might actually have a bit of an advantage. The speed advantage, obviously, is in favor of Cloakybots, but... With all the hills coming in here, I can see spiders actually working out okay. I think... Oh no, most of these are... Never mind, most of these are bot impathable. So there's quite a few locations the spiders could be, and that would not be manageable by cloakies. Now, right in front of a glaive is not one of those, but... Oh well. Mistakes were made. At any rate, if the fleas can get close enough, then they should still be able to get in some scouting, and no, they can't. Fieldthoss already on the ball with the Lotuses to make sure the Fleas cannot get close enough to figure out what's going on. I mean, the Fleas still have places they can go. The Plateaus, they're... That's something, but it's... It's probably not going to be the immediate choice. Because, of course, the thing with Spiders is you want to have your Fleas wherever you can in order to have as much knowledge as possible, because then, well, you can ambush. And Spiders are, if nothing, but... If nothing if not ambushers. That's pretty much how they play the game. And Venom's already up. Venom Hermit is probably what we're going to see. That is the typical strategy. Guy up's likely to go for that. They might, if they haven't played Spiders in a while, go for Venom Redback. That was the old meta. It's kind of fallen out of favor, but against Cloakybot, it could work, provided we don't see a lot of Roccos. However, there's no reason not to. And indeed, Guy up is indeed going for the Venom Redback strategy. They're not going for Venom Hermit, which... I didn't expect, and Google Frog correcting me about the medals. Apparently there are going to be medals. That is good, because there should be. This is a tournament. Tournaments should have medals. At any rate, this guy up army is taking a little while to build up, but that's fine. I mean, like I said, this is a corner start, so they have plenty of time to do so. They're focusing far more on their economy, as they should, considering the positions, and that is something Fieldhouse cannot punish. Try as they might. Don't really have any options to deal with that. Similarly, though, Guy Up unable to punish the expansions coming in from Filthos, as Filthos has been pretty vigilant about making sure that their conjurer is not undefended. And that's absolutely necessary. There's no way that you can just not do that against spiders. Spiders have way too many options to surreptitiously get into your base. You don't want to let those fleas just come up from behind and tear apart your conjurers before they can do anything. That is going to be a complete mistake. That is going to just kill you. That's going to be it. You're done. But that's not much else I can say. And no, my microphone has not changed. People are pointing out that they like my voice now for some reason. No, my microphone is completely unchanged. Very little has actually changed about my setup over the last, like, year. Yeah, year and two months. I, I got a microphone about February of last year, I think. I've been using that microphone ever since. It's a great microphone. I think I just managed to get the setup finally working. Also, morning voice. That could be part of it, too. It is early morning. My voice is a bit deeper as a result. That might be why. I'm also a bit closer to the mic than I was before. Nah. I mean, being close to a microphone, most condenser microphones, you will sound a bit deeper. Sound a bit more full. So that could be it, too. There's a lot of things it could be. This is actually a really nice position for the microphone to be in. It's... It, I can see the monitors clearly, the microphone's right above my head, it... It's great. Anyway, technical considerations regarding my recording setup aside, this is... 
Prill still in a good position for Field Thus. They have the Rockos up. They don't have to worry too much about worrying about the forces coming in from Guy Up because Guy Up's forces are all vulnerable to Rockos. And Guy Up has not switched over to Hermits yet. They have switched over to Recluses. Also a good choice. Recluses are one of those things that you see basically used as a counter for Rockos, and in large enough numbers of both, they will win. In small numbers, I still kind of say Rockos have a slight advantage. But those are usually not the numbers you're going to see them in once you get beyond the first few minutes. So at this point, attrition is still a little bit in Gaia's favor. Economy is a little bit in... No, not a little bit, actually. When you consider everything because of the excess from Gaia, it's actually quite heavily in Fjolthos' favor. There's roughly a thousand metal difference between the two, and at this stage in the game, that's usually like a 25% difference between the two in metal that's been turned into units. So Gaiop's army is three-quarters the size of what it should be. And, of course, having a bit of a tough time maintaining itself. The unit type counters are also not in their favor, but the Recluses, at least having those, is going to cause Failthos to make a judici judicious retreat, think about what they are doing, but still have a control over almost half the map. So, depending on how you look at it, Failthos is either not doing so hot, or is on the path to win and Gaiop just has to figure out what mistake Fieldhouse is going to make that they can be capitalized upon. The only real thing that I can see as a slight weakness is that Fieldhouse is focusing heavily on Rockos, but that's a minor mistake. I mean, it's not even a mistake, that's just a thing. It's not a mistake, but if you're over, if you're focusing a lot on one unit type, that is a thing that can be capitalized upon. The only real upside is the speed factors. Venoms are quite quick. They could avoid the Rockos, and that's exactly what they're doing. But they don't have any real backup to help get rid of the metal extractor. All they can really do is run distraction. There's no redbacks or anything else that's actually dealing with this stuff. I don't see much of what they could do. These Venoms are being basically forced back. That's a bit of a shame for them, but hey, it's not too bad. Guy up still has a firebase over here. Only one of the Venoms actually died. The other one can be repaired, and it looks like it is going to be. But the problem is that there's just Recluses coming in, and Recluses... That's more of a problem for Fieldhouse right now. Gaia up actually managing to maintain a decent economic position. I don't actually expect they're going to be repairing that Venom. That doesn't seem to be a priority. That Venom's just off in the back, waiting to die. Eventually. There's death. And Sides in the back actually not doing that great of a job either. Great preparation from, from Gaia up to make sure that there's not much here. Their prudence has paid off. Regardless, their economic play has not. Fjolthas' territory control is turning into nearly a two-fold economic advantage. And in terms of the actual metal usage, at this point, a roughly 10% gap. And that's just going to grow over time. And in terms of units available, it's even bigger. It's again, roughly a 25% gap. Like, it's still... Still, Gaiop has about three-quarters the army value of Fjolthas, and Fjolthas is going to just make that difference grow, unless Gaiop can be really clever with their attrition. And they have a lot of recluses. They might actually be able to. Recluse versus Rocco, like I said, in large numbers, recluse wins. These are fairly large numbers. And you got almost, you got almost ten Roccos. You have three or four recluses. The recluses do have the extra, the extra range, but quite a few recluses over to the western side of the map, and there's not much that can stop them. They'll just be able to tear apart the defenders, no problem, and okay, with some problem. But still, with few problems. And the Roccos, no problems. The snipers, problems. The, the snipers are going to actually kill them pretty quick. The only thing saving them right now is that Fieldhouse doesn't have radar on that particular recluse, but that's it. That's all that's going to actually make a difference there. Otherwise, no! Otherwise, that's gonna die. That being said, though, these recluses over in the corner able to get rid of a few defenders here and there, and if that's enough, that actually forces Fjolthas back, giving Guy up the southwest side of the map, which should be enough of an economy that with the reclaim they were going for, they have control. At this point, though, the recluse actually in a perfect spot. That is, like, that is the coolest thing about spiders. You can just go behind a cliff, and it's like, just there. It's great. Anyway, with that done, not a whole lot can really change there. Actually, Flea's coming in to help get rid of the Rockers as well. 
mean, that is a good choice. That is a really good choice that I'm a bit surprised we hadn't seen Gaiap go for yet, but they have... The Glaives, however, do destroy fleas. Like, Glaives are effectively riots to fleas. There are enough fleas to get rid of these Glaives, but it's not quite enough to get rid of the entire army. Still, it is enough to rout it, and that is enough to give Gaiap control of about half the map. Considering what Control Failed has had before, that is significant, but considering that these Banshees are up and there's no Redbacks up, there's not much else, or Archangels, and Archangels, Tarantulas. There's not much that can be done here. Gaiop doesn't have a whole lot of options. They're about to lose their commander, and with that, they will lose all their storage, which is just energy. It's still bad. It's still not terrible, they're not accessing anything, but it's still bad. So Philthos right now is just turning that, they turn that money into Banshees, they turn that Banshees into what looks like a win. Tarantulas are being built up, but it's a little late. I mean, Redbacks are the one thing I'd say would have been great in this situation, and only this situation. I can see why they weren't built before, the Recluses were the better option, considering the Rockos being the primary component of the army, but the everything else is a bit of a problem. Actually, that, that's a huge problem there. It's, that's really where everything falls apart, is that you need the Redbacks to help get rid of Banshees, or Tarantulas, but you only need them to get rid of Banshees, so it's essentially on a read, or if you can scout it out. Which is kind of going back to my earlier point regarding fleas. If a flea managed to get back in here like, right at the start of the game, it could have seen this gunship plant being constructed, and from there could have seen that there was a gunship plant, and Banshees were being built, and so Tarantulas would have been really effective. But that was not scattered out because the flea wasn't there in the first place and there was no easy way to gain the flea around the back. So, bit of a shame that, but that is going to be game one for Filthus. Guy up, put in a bit of a, put in a tough fight, but unfortunately never really had a strong position to work from. I mean, just looking at the entire game, they never had much. Their excess actually did end up behind Filthus, but by that point it was already a two-fold difference in attrition. It was a Two-fold at least in difference in income for several minutes. I mean, 5,000 metal between them. It That was kind of harsh. But Gaiap will likely learn something, and we'll see the next map, whatever they pick, will probably show that they are not going to be just changing out too much. They probably will go for a micro-oriented map, though. Desert Plateaus is a large map. It's not that macro-oriented, but... It's a little deceptive, because on the one hand, there aren't very many metal extractors. On the other hand, they're worth roughly three metal each. So, it's a bit of a trade-off. On the one hand, you aren't getting much, but you, on the other hand, you get a lot per metal extractor. So, overdrive is stronger, and your overall economy play is still fairly strong, and the map is large enough that it's important to have strong macro play. Gaia, however, is someone I have always thought of as a fairly strong macro player as well. So, I don't know what their strategy is going to be in terms of map choice. So, with that, I suppose a break is in order. Or at least not looking at this screen so I can actually change things over and figure out what's going on in terms of the tournament. But yeah, I can't think of any map that Gaiap would pick. Oh, never mind, Ravaged. Okay, cool. We're going to Ravage next. That is not what I expected, but that kind of makes sense. That is a popular map. That is a really good map. And Gaif has apparently done a lot of practice on this map. So, it, wait, what? Oh, they're joking. Never mind. <laughs> Gaif has apparently never played this map, at least not on, this not on the computer they're playing on now. So once Gaif has finished downloading the map, which for some reason they don't have, I don't understand what what went on there. But once that's done, we'll have a Ravaged game. And that will be... That'll be fun. I like I like Ravaged. It's, it's probably my favorite map, or up there. I think Ravaged and maybe... Onyx Cauldron used to be, but I'm not sure anymore. I've kind of cooled on Onyx Cauldron recently. Something about the way that it's built, something about the way that it tends to get really bogged down. Like, it's got an interesting design, yeah. But, I don't know. Very pretty, though. And then... I mean, obviously Trojan Hills is my favorite. 
or Bandit Plains. I'm never really sure which. I think Trojan Hills is my favorite just because I do like the smaller size, but Bandit Plains has a lot more flexibility to how you can play it. Even if it is a 16 by 16 map and a 1v1, that's just... Ah. So anyway, once... Once that's done, it will be the l possibly last game of the final. I expect we will see. This is Philthos playing very strongly that it won't go super well for Gaiap. But we'll see. Who knows? It might get a game three. Gaiap might actually turn this around. But against Philthos, that's intimidating because Philthos is the strongest player in the game, pretty much. Or at least has been historically. Like, they've been up there. They have gotten to that first place. And Lamadeus didn't get far enough to actually contend against them, which is a bit weird, because Gaia did manage to beat Lamadeus, actually. If I'm not mistaken. Or no, did they? No, they never fought Lamadeus. No, they did! Yeah, they, did. they beat Lamadeus in round 5. We wa What am I saying? We watched that map. We watched that match. That's how they got this far in the first place. Anyway. Yeah. Oops. Game 2. So... They can, theoretically, beat Philthos. But, it's not entirely clear whether or not they actually will beat Philthos, because that involves beating Philthos. And Philthos is terrifying. Guy up, going for gunship, right off the bat. They just want to end this quick. They're going for cheese. They're going for probably Blastwing Cheese, as apparently is Philthos. Like, Philthos, they're probably going for it because they figure, well, I'm a game ahead, might as well. No, both the, both going for Vindicator? Are they both going for a Commander Nap? <laughs> I have never seen a Symmetric Commander Nap ever. What is this? What even is this? Yeah, Philthos going... For a bit of a smarter strategy on that one, too. They got the early metal extractor going on. So, Gaiap got their Vindicator done a little sooner, but anything afterwards is going to be a lot easier to be built up. No, Commander Drop for Gaiap, not a Commander Nap. But the question is, is Fieldhouse going for a Drop or going for a Nap? And it's hard to say. Getting Nats on top of this, so this might be a Drop and Fieldhouse's Commander... S Strike Commander... I mean, so is this. Actually, is this Strike Commander? Is that what it's called? Guardian Chassis, never mind. It's Guardian Chassis against against the Strike Commander from Guy Up. And now it's just Vindicator Wars. Field Thus forced to drop! Taking a fair bit of damage in the process. And Guy Up's Commander seems to be doing okay, but Guy Up needs to drop it. They're going to lose their Vindicator right away. But Guy Up's Commander is still in a strong enough position that they don't have to worry about this. Field Thus, however, is going to get the upgrade going. And with that, Guy Up will lose this. Like, there's no way that Gaia can actually win this. They don't. They have the Nats coming in, and that's their main strategy right now, is effectively avoid Field Thoughts until the Nats can come in and stun Field Thoughts out, but there's no way Field Thoughts has line of sight. Gaia's going to lose their commander, and that is going to be it. The shortest finals game ever, which is actually saying something, because I'm pretty sure the next shortest is like two or three minutes, two or three minutes, maybe a bit less. But I don't know what Gaia has in mind. This is kind of it. That's That's game. It was a nice try, but unfortunately for Gaia, Fieldhouse had the extra money. They could easily morph. They didn't have to worry about spending all that on Nats. I liked the idea, but it was, it was... The Nats were a little out of position. If they had been in position, they might have done something, but even one or two Nats would have been a complete luck game by that point. Entirely luck-based. It would have been a matter of the shots happening to hit Fieldhouse's commander. It probably wouldn't have happened. Nats aren't that accurate. Like, what am I looking at the graphs for? There's <laughs> nothing to look at the graphs for. There's... We saw what happened. There's nothing to analyze. Fieldhouse had a bit more money. Turn it into a commander with a heat ray. Game over. I hope you enjoyed that. I actually did. Honestly, I mean, I I laughed. So, that's a good sign. Anyway, with that, that is the tournament. Congratulations, Fieldhouse, for winning against Guy Up. For out-cheesing the cheese. Although, I just find it amusing that they both went for the exact same cheese. I mean, that is the cheese you go for. Is that or Blastwing? And Blastwings, they haven't been as popular recently. 
Like, Blast Wings are only super useful if your opponent is going for a standard build, and if both players go for cheese, because, I mean, Fieldhouse had the advantage of, I am a game ahead, who cares if I lose? And Gaia had the desperate situation of, I need to win, and Fieldhouse is just such a strong player, what do I do? Although, like I said, they beat Lamadeus, so there's options. At any rate, congratulations to the players, Fieldhouse, Gaia, and Google Frog, for getting first, second, third place, and thank you all of you for playing and being in the tournament. It was great to have the participation because tournaments are fun when people play and non existent when people don't. I mean, that is kind of a major part of a tournament is the participants. So, hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed casting that, and thanks also to Crow and Mike Pester for doing simulcasts, Crow doing an additional during Swiss English broadcasts, so there's other matches that were cast that I didn't cast that they casted, so you can go watch those. They should be on their YouTube channels, like Parzival WQ, I think, or Parzival QW, I'm not entirely sure. And the... Other than that, there's... Mike Pester, who I don't know their YouTube channel. That was a Russian simulcast. Mostly different games in the Swiss, and they also simulcasted the semis and finals. So thank you all for helping out with that. And thank you, Aquanim, so much for organizing all this. It's great to have a tournament after so many months without one. So once again, thanks for watching, and have a good night.